The ticker tape, people would go in to hear him. Now, that doesn't happen very often for many people because he had this capacity for immense passion laced with humour. I mean, he was a, a brilliant orator. Dennis Skinner, you saw many of his speeches here, but also understood his importance to the Labour Party. What was that? What was his... I think he even excelled more outside at the conferences and uh, at the Tribune rallies, which he traditionally was the last speaker. Uh, but he was a very, a very honest man, very straight. The only one that I can recall in all the years of the Labour Party that never took any honour, he never went in the Lords, that's what he said he'd do and he kept to his promise. He was straight to die and what's more, when he came here last autumn he was still articulate to the end and he was dominating the discussion. OK, well gentlemen, we have to leave it there, we're short of time, but thank you both very much indeed for sharing your memories here of Michael Foote, particularly who was here in the House of Commons just last autumn attending a Labour Party event, still here, still part of the political scene well into his 90s. Back to you. Well, uh, thanks very much. Uh, a tribute to, just in the last few minutes, from the Foreign Secretary David Miliband, who said Michael Foote led a remarkable life. I remember meeting him on the tube in the 1980s for a famous speaker, he really listened. Thoughts of David Miliband after news of Michael Foote dying at the age of 96. We'll have more in the one o'clock news in a moment or two. That is after the weather details with Nick Miller. Hello. Sadly, the lovely sunshine we had over the past couple of days has disappeared behind a veil of cloud. A fairly thin veil, it has to be said, so there is some hazy brightness around. But on the whole, cloudier than the last few days, still mainly dry, but it is feeling cooler, if not colder, especially across southern areas and a brisk wind. All of this cloud that has swept in from the west. It's not rain-bearing cloud, though, apart from perhaps westernmost parts of Northern Ireland, later into Pembrokeshire and Cornwall, the odd spot of rain. But on the whole, it's another dry, usable day. It's just not as sunny. Very bright skies, though, in northeast Scotland this afternoon and for the Northern Isles, particularly into Shetland, where there's plenty of sunshine on offer. But we move further south and it is just some hazy brightness, so the cloud thins at times to allow some wheat sunshine to come through. But a new feature of the weather today we haven't had over the past couple of days is this brisk easterly wind, especially throughout southern counties here. It is a very noticeable feature and it's adding an extra chill to the air. So where we had 10 or 11 degrees yesterday, more like 6 or 7, add on the wind. And yes, it's feeling colder than that. And across Wales, a lot of cloud, but it is dry. Now most of us in Northern Ireland will have a dry afternoon. But again, it's the further west you are, there'll be the odd spit and spot coming through. But that's all it's going to be. Football this evening, international friendlies at Swansea, at Glasgow in London and it'll be a fine evening temperatures just above freezing it'll be dry and BBC Radio has coverage. Now let's move on through the evening and overnight because there will be some changes it's going to stay dry but the cloud will begin to clear from the north and that will allow the temperatures to drop away once again. Another cold and frosty night. Some of us scraping the ice off the car in the morning. It's just the far south where we stay a whisker above freezing. Elsewhere we are at or several degrees below freezing. So another cold start in the morning. But Thursday promises to be brighter than our weather today. We'll start with a lot of cloud in the far south. Even this will break up. Plenty of dry weather with sunny spells. Though a weak weather system across northern and eastern Scotland with some patchy light rain, sleet and snow and temperatures top out 6 to 8 degrees maybe a degree higher than it's been today. And into Friday still lots of dry weather around though this weather system in the east will bring some outbreaks of rain to eastern areas, maybe some winteriness to the tops of the hills. The former Labour leader Michael Foote has died aged 96. A committed socialist, he stood down as party leader after Labour's catastrophic election defeat in 1983. This news will be received with great uh, sadness, uh, not only in my own party, but uh, across the country as a whole. John Venables is back where he belongs, behind bars, says the mother of the murdered toddler, James Bulger. Millions of pounds given to live aid meant for Ethiopia's starving was used by rebels to buy guns. ITV is back in the black. The broadcaster reports profits of £25 million. 
And how about this for an assembly? Pupils here waiting to see Amy Williams' gold medal as she's welcomed back to the city of Bath. Coming up later in the sport, Capello calls for fan support. The England manager urges them not to boo John Terry in their match against Egypt tonight at Wembley. Good afternoon. Welcome to the BBC News at One. The former Labour leader Michael Foote has died at the age of 96. A committed socialist, he entered Parliament in 1945 and became leader in 1980. His left-wing manifesto in the 1983 general election was dubbed the longest suicide note in history and it was blamed for the party's heavy defeat. Sean Lay looks back at his life. What we've got to do is to use this conference as one of the great instruments for persuading our movement to re-adopt the socialist policies on which we were elected. Michael Foote was one of the greatest platform orators of the 20th century, yet he was also among the Labour Party's least successful leaders, presiding over its worst defeat in 50 years. The son of a former Liberal MP, he was shaped by a non-conformist childhood in the West Country. As protégé of the powerful newspaper owner Lord Beaverbrook, he came to prominence editing the London Evening Standard before entering Parliament as MP for Plymouth in Labour's post-war landslide. He pressed for a more radical agenda, especially in defence policy, helping to found the campaign for nuclear disarmament. It is a mighty upsurge of democratic protest. His lifelong hero was Anarin Bevan, the leader of Labour's left wing. He was to be Bevan's successor as MP for Ebbw Vale. In 1974, as Employment Secretary, he faced anger there over rising local job losses. 